Alex, the concept of an expanding universe has entered public consciousness, which I think is good for cosmologists. But let's try to really understand what we mean by expansion. What do we see? What are the reasons for it? What's the prognosis for its future? How can we begin to really get into this concept of an expanding universe? Uh, well, what we see is that uh, different other galaxies, which are at large distances from us, move away from us at very high speeds. Um, now, this is not like uh, an expansion, uh, say, of something, um, like you have an explosion and pieces fly apart. And my friend often asks me, what does the universe expand into? Right. <laughs> and uh, here we have the expansion of space itself. So the space between the galaxies expands, so the distances between them grow. And that's the expansion of the universe. It's radically different than the, than the galaxies expanding into existing space. And, and to just uh, uh, there's more distance between them because they're already existing, but the space literally increases between them. Right. More space is created. Wow. Uh, so you can picture it in a two-dimensional analogy. For example, if you think of a balloon mm -hmm. and you make dots on the balloon representing galaxies, then you blow the balloon, its radius increases, and the distances between these dots grow. Mm -hmm. uh, so the distances grow because the amount of space in this two-dimensional universe increases. Okay. Okay, now that's, the, that's what we see today as we look. Right, but in our case, in this two-dimensional balloon, of course, balloon expands in three dimensions. In yeah. our case, there is nothing beyond. <laughs> so an ant that lives in the balloon doesn't know about the third dimension. Right. So we are that ant. We are that ant, and, and, but we're in a third dimension expanding into... A, a, uh, that our three-dimensional space is expanding like that two-dimensional area, right? surface. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's what we see. Now, how, how could that have been generated? The main reason for the observed present expansion of the universe is uh, the Big Bang, uh, which is the huge explosive event that happened about 14 billion years ago. And at that time, all particles were sent flying from one another at tremendous speeds. And basically, it now continues by inertia. All these galaxies are moving away from us because of that initial expansion. But still expanding the space in their, in their uh, uh, flying away from each other. That's true. Uh, now, normally, you would expect that expansion slows down with time because of gravity. Right. right? Gravity attracts and therefore... Uh, galaxies would fly away slower and slower. Uh, however, this is not what we observe, and that was one of the great surprises in, astrono in astronomy. Uh, I think it's one of the great surprises in human history, in the human history of science. I would think so. It, it, it was a very unexpected development, I would say, for most people, because a few people predicted it. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, this, uh, what we now observe is that, in fact, in the recent epoch, uh, in the recent cosmological epoch, in the last uh, billion years or so, the universe expands with acceleration. So the, instead of getting slower, the uh, expansion, right? expansion actually gets faster. And, uh, now, we can't attribute that to the Big Bang, because that's over. That's right. Right. So there is some force that pushes the universe to expand faster and faster. Against gravity. Well, uh, maybe not against gravity, because the uh, theory that, uh, the simplest theory that explains the observation is that it is gravity, but repulsive gravity. Okay. So this force is, is working against gravity in, in pushing the universe even faster apart. Uh, well, in fact, uh, uh, the simplest explanation of what we see is that it is gravity, but it is repulsive gravity. Um, <laughs> so, uh, more, of course, normally gravity is attractive, but um, one object in the universe apparently has repulsive gravity, and that is vacuum, which is empty space. Now, to most people, when you say vacuum, it sounds like that's nothing, but a vacuum to a physicist is, is almost the opposite of nothing. There's a lot of stuff in a physicist's vacuum. 
That's right. <laughs> uh, vacuum determines the properties of all the elementary particles and everything that can exist in that vacuum. Right. And vacuum can exist in different energy states. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the theory of inflation, there was this false vacuum, which has very high energy, and it caused the universe expand at tremendous rate, because that uh, high energy vacuum creates very strong repulsive gravitational force. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, a vacuum which is very low energy, and until recently, people thought that the energy of our vacuum is exactly zero. However, these observations that the universe expands with acceleration indicate that our vacuum actually has very small but positive energy. And that is what is causing the universe to expand with acceleration. So there are two components to the present expansion of the universe. One is expansion by inertia after the Big Bang, and the other is the, uh, this acceleration uh, due to the repulsive gravity of the vacuum. And this repulsive uh, gravity of the vacuum occurs everywhere because every place there is space, there is this force that may be very, very, very small, but space is so big. So the more space you have, and as space expands, the stronger this very tiny anti-gravity force becomes and becomes even more and more dominant, is that right? That's right. <laughs> there is a lot of space in the universe, and uh, this force, which is, is totally irrelevant on small scales, mm -hmm. for example, like our solar system, but it becomes, it accumulates and becomes dominant over the large distances comparable to the size of the visible universe. And if nothing changes with this, this uh, anti-gravity force of, this fault of, of, of empty space, then as space continues to increase, the, the relative power of this anti-gravity force continues to increase. So it gets, the, theoretically, the expansion, the acceleration of the expansion would get faster and faster because there's, there's more of it compared to the the distant galaxies that we now see will all fly away uh, and uh, beyond uh, our horizon. So after uh, several billion years, maybe 10 billion years, uh, there will be not much to see <laughs> in the sky. Uh, there will be a few galaxies in our local group, and there is Andromeda that's moving towards us, but uh, that's about it. But this assumes that this, this energy of empty space continues at its same rate. I mean, it is possible. Some people think it may decay under some, over some very long periods of time. So it's, it's, it's stored, sort of still an open question. I mean, it, it may continue to expand in acceleration. It could get less. It, it could get the other direction, maybe fly back together. Uh, that's right. So it, it could be that the energy of the uh, vacuum gradually decreases. Uh, th there are models like that, and um, in that case, uh, the acceleration will slow down, and, when, uh, and then the energy of the vacuum may become negative. And if that happens, the universe will recollapse in a big crunch. Um, actually, there are uh, now popular models of uh, the multiverse. Uh, Many universes. According to which, the, well, the, they are... Uh, you, say, you may say many universes, but what we mean here are different, very remote regions yes. of the same space-time. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this model, the energy of the vacuum is not a universal constant, but it can have a large variety of values. Um, so uh, in our region, it is small and positive. In other regions, it is large and positive or large and negative and so forth. But if negative energy vacuum really exists, this means that eventually our vacuum will decay to that because that has lower energy. Oh. And most likely way for this to happen is that a tiny bubble will materialize and start expanding. And it will expand faster and faster, reaching the speed of light, and it will hit us without warning. So. Uh, all of a sudden, we will be turned in some alien form of matter, which can exist only in that <laughs> negative energy vacuum, and that will be followed by a big crunch. So uh, if I have to bet, this would be my bet for the end of our local region. Quite an optimist you are. <laughs> <laughs> but it will take a long time <laughs> okay. for this to happen.